Hey there, TRW crew, Matt Vassallo here with TheRhinestoneWorld.com. So in this video tutorial, we're going to show you how to trace an image with the B-Spline tool in CorelDRAW in order to make a silhouette. So once we get the silhouette made, it's awesome. We can make it for a shirt. We can make it for a car decal. We can make it for wall art. You can make it for basically anything you want. So the main thing you want to do when you're looking at an image is to make sure you have some kind of different open cavities and open areas in that image. So you can see on this baseball swing, we can see that the legs are spread apart there. Perfect. You got the helmet with the little gap in there and you have the arms split apart. So it's going to look like he has two arms. So for example, if this bat right here were pointing straight at us, it wouldn't look like a baseball bat in that silhouette. So you want to make sure you have some extension on the bat a gap in between where the arms are, the legs, and everything else. So this one should trace out pretty good for our silhouette here. So to go ahead and get this started, what we're going to use is the B-Spline tool. So in our custom TRW toolbar right up here, you'll see our B-Spline tool. Great thing about this tool is when I draw, I'm going to click. As I click again, it's going to form that anchor there, and then it's going to move around to wherever I move it, and then click, and you'll see each time I click, it's dropping a box, double click, and it ends it. So let's go ahead and start on the actual design. So I'm going to zoom in here, and you don't have to get too detailed, so I'm not going to get too crazy with this one. I could zoom way in and try and get it perfect, but I'm going to go right about here. And I'm just going to start trimming around his helmet right here. Now, when I come to a corner like this, if I hold the V as in Victor, it actually forms an anchor and drops it right there so it doesn't curve with it. So anytime you come to any sharper points, you can hit that V as in Victor. So I'm coming around and tracing the helmet here. Let's come around to the top here. And coming around to the back of the helmet. And I'm going to hit V again right here. And as I move to the corners of my screen, you can see my whole screen moves with it. So it kind of allows me to move down on the design. So I'm not hitting anything crazy or any special buttons to be able to do that. So I'm coming down the back right here. And just seeing, you can see some little movements with his jersey right here. And then I'm going to come back where the jersey's tucked in, hit V again. And then I got the belt area right here. Coming down a little bit more here. And let's go around. Coming down the leg here. And you can see there's some different little wrinkles in the pants. I like to grab a couple of those little wrinkles just to show a little bit more detail in the design. It's just going to make it look a little bit nicer once you actually look at the silhouette. And you can see the bend in this leg here. And not going to get too crazy along the bottom of the leg here. But you can see, again, some wrinkles in the bottom of the pants here that I'm going to follow around with a little bit of those. I'm going to hit V as we come to a shoe right here. And then as the shoe goes around, I'm going to actually get a couple of these cleats in here because this is going to look really nice once we have the actual design. So I don't want to make these angles too sharp. So I'm not hitting the V button because I don't want them to be too pointed for when we're weeding the design because these little cleats are going to be small when we're actually coming to the weeding process. So I'm not holding that V tool or the V button because I don't want it to be too sharp right there. So coming up here to this last cleat here. And then you can see his shoe kind of right on the top right there. So I got one more cleat right in this area. And then the shoe kind of coming down here. And I'm going to come up around with the shoe right here. And then come up into the laces. Now I'm not going to do anything crazy with the laces. Because again, going to be very hard to weed something that small. So I'm not going to do anything with the laces. It's going to skip right by them and start heading up the leg here. So again, not a whole lot of wrinkles in that area. So I'm going to go ahead and just fly through this area here pretty quickly. You can see this is where his legs kind of cross over. So I'm going to go V here 
and then this is his other leg coming down. Okay, so again, taking my time a little bit on this. I could obviously do it a lot quicker, have a little bit less detail, and it's still going to look great, but just want to show you kind of slowly as I go along so you can follow along so it's going to help you. And I'm going to hit V there. Come along into the shoe right here. Now on this shoe right here, you can see I can't see any of those cleats really, so I'm actually going to kind of just make a couple cleats. Even though I can't see the cleat marks there, I'm just going to make a couple of them. Just use my imagination here. Come up with the shoe right there. It's curving along there. And let's maybe throw a couple cleats up near the top here. So we'll put one there. And maybe one more small little one here. And then we're going to curve along the top of the shoe right here. So again, even though we couldn't see any cleats right there, I just used my imagination, created a couple cleats, just so, again, it's going to look like some baseball cleats in the silhouette. Now we're coming up the pant leg here. And you can see I'm zoomed in pretty far, and this isn't a very good picture. So the quality of the image is pretty poor. You can see how pixelated it is. But when you're doing a silhouette, not a huge deal, as long as you can see the difference between, like, obviously, if I had a, a gray background here that matched his shorts, that would be a little bit more difficult. But you can see, I can see this all pretty well here, coming up to the top of the pants here, right by the belt. And I'm going to go up to the belt. You can see the shirt sucked in right here. Let's start coming out with the shirt area. And we're trimming up to the top here. So something like this, if you sped through it and didn't. Now this right here, you can see a shirt coming out. I'm not going to bring it out that far. And the reason why is I know that's just his shirt. But in a silhouette, it might just look like a, a, a big belly. So I'm not going to follow through where that shirt is just for that reason. And you can always edit it a little bit afterwards if need be. So coming up here on his wrist. Let's get to his hand here. And now we're to the bat. So we're going to follow out with the bat here. You can see the bat has a little bit of a curve on it there as it comes out. Coming down to the bottom of the bat. Now I'm going to wrap around with the top of the bat right here. And... Let's start our way back up the top of the bat. Coming in again with the bat a little bit. And then you can see his fingers on his top hand. Bottom hand right there coming over. So again, if I wanted to, I could add a little area there to where it looks almost like his knuckles coming through. And then I got the top of his hand right here for his second arm. And let's go ahead and get that going up here. Now the good thing again, like I said, you can always edit it a little bit afterwards. So if need be, you can always make a couple changes a little bit afterwards. It's funny, I've done, I did one of my son and an image somewhat similar to this and I added a little nose for him. Just to make it look like you could see a little bit of a detail of his face. So let's go ahead and come down. Now I'm getting the inside of his arm right here. So let's go ahead and get that shirt right there, come up his sleeve, come into the connector of his other arm right there, down to his wrist. Now this is the actual bat right there, that's a knob of the bat, so we're going to bring that around a little bit. And we should be pretty good right there. So let's see what it looks like. So to see what it looks like, all you need to do, click on your main image, turn it to whatever color you want, purple, change this background color to a white, and you can see that design looks pretty nice right there. I like the way that turned out. You can see everything there. What I might do here is I might drag this up a little bit, drag this out a little bit, give them a little bit more of a butt here, the way that the, the actual design was going. And bring this in a little bit here. You can always do anything with his arm. You can see the knob of the bat going through there. Looks pretty good. If you wanted to pull out like a little nose, watch this. I can pull that knob, that node out a tiny little bit. 
pull this one up top a tiny little bit. And now it almost even looks like he's got a little nose there. So I'm going to turn this to black so you can see it. Let's move the image off to the side. And there's our perfect trace. Pretty sweet, isn't it? So we got our trace. You can see his arm there. You can see. Now remember those cleats that we added on the bottom? Again, makes it look a little bit better like some baseball cleats. We got some cleats there at the bottom. We got our back coming through. Now the only thing we need to do, nice swing like that, we need him hitting the baseball, right? Just draw a little circle with our ellipse tool. And there's him making contact with the baseball right there. And I would say we are pretty much done with this design. Now, the awesome thing about something like this is you can change it to anything you want. Now, this part right here, I do want to go ahead and simplify that out. So I'm going to click on my black, shift click to the white right there and hit back minus front. Now that's all one. OK. And then the ball right here, we're going to go ahead and click on both of them and Go ahead and weld that together. Now those are all welded together. So now it's all one object. And if we wanted to, we could make this into a car decal real quick. So if we wanted to use our envelope tool and our magic envelopes in the TRW Stone Wizard, we could do something like this. Watch. Draw a box. And I'm going to click on my envelope tool there. My envelope's over here. And with my envelope, I'm going to add new. If I hold control it'll move it up like this if I just drag the bottom it's gonna drag the bottom up like that right there so that looks pretty nice there let's drag this down a tiny bit maybe drag that bottom up a tiny bit more I would say that looks pretty good there and I'm gonna do a quick little smart fill and that's gonna create that envelope for me get rid of this design and then I'm gonna drag it to the bottom right click and flip it and there's my bottom part of my design so I got both of those let's make sure they're centered oh well we don't want to center it directly see how I went to center it there and it centered it with the bat and everything else so we don't want a perfect center of it so let's hit both of those and center them I can bring that down a little bit more and now we got let's say this is the sting baseball team or sting and we do a custom name or a number so we can just go ahead and do let's do sarasota so we got our sarasota there go to fonts and go to an impact font and then we got let's say l-a-n-d-o-n number 10 click on this orange shift click to sarasota and right click on magic envelope orange and we want that to be a number 10, so let's add the number sign. Orange, shift click to land in number 10, and magic envelope. I like that, and we are pretty much good to go. Let's get this down to a decal size, which is right there. Let's turn it to white. Let's go to my mockups. Let's go to accessories, front design. We're going to click on this right here and check this out. Boom, there you go. Perfect car decal for the back window of a car, and it doesn't get any more customized than that. An actual silhouette of their son or daughter or whoever it is. Okay, so that is how to create a silhouette in Corel Draw and the TRW Stone Wizard to be able to make a very unique design or decal for your customer. So something that's pretty awesome. You can charge that setup and design fee. And now we could use this for a shirt, a car decal, a bag, anything you want, but something very unique that has their exact swing. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please comment below. Let us know what you think about our videos. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you do have any questions, visit therhinestoneworld.com or give us a call. The number is 941-755-1696. This is Matt with therhinestoneworld.com and you guys all have a great day.